And today we're turning the tables on the interviewing because I've invited Rebecca to be interviewed for the Heart to Heart um, conversations. Hello, Rebecca. Well, hi, Vivian. How are you today? I'm splendid. Thank you. Oh, this is um, I'm fabulous. I, I really am looking forward to this today. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, so Heart to Heart Conversations is really a chance for you to tell us your story and where the defining pivots were in your life. One of the themes in this series is, um, I guess, a core running theme for me is I believe love is a choice. Um, what are your thoughts on love? Well, um, I, and you know, I, I've heard you say that before, Vivian, and I really agree. I, I feel that, um, you, however, I think you have to have an honesting, honest awakening to realize that. Mm. And I do. And I think I've lived my life choosing love. And, and that's a choice I've made. And it was a process that I went through to learn to choose love. And, you know, I don't remember, I can't think of your exact words, but I, you said that the heart to heart conversations would be with people who you felt like a heart connection in, in our life. In your life, and I feel that with you, Vivian. And I was thinking about our relationship, and I thought, why? I wonder why we have this heart connection. I'm, I'm just so curious about everything. And I thought, I think about the laws of nature sometimes. If something's out of order, and I was thinking about the birds singing in harmony, and maybe if one was off key, it would, might feel disturbing. And I thought, <laughs> Vivian, I said, I think you and I sing in the same natural heart song like the birds i absolutely love that <laughs> well and i and the other thing that i love is that you said it's a it's a process of awakening and for some maybe they're just tuning their instrument and figuring out their key or their notes and so if we're singing that means that we're um we've already gone through that process is that is that how you see it yes i do absolutely um uh, you know, I think that for me and my life, my journey, um, there have been a lot of moments of clarity for me. So when I look back on my past um, or I reflect on it, um, I say there was a time when I acted out of love or maybe even a time when I acted out of fear. And um, so um, I thought, you know what, today I'm going to share from my heart with you and our listeners about my journey and my travels along this path um, of choosing love and having an awakening. Well, tell us about one of your awakening moments, one of your defining life moments. I can. Um, let me see. I, I guess um, if I want to define the things that um, uh, really changed me, I guess first thing I have to kind of go back and set the scene and maybe talk a little bit about my family upbringing, which was, I've mentioned before in previous podcasts, it was kind of a tough one. And I had a tough home environment, and it 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 was um, it was not uh, not a loving one. It wasn't always without love, um, but from a very young age, I didn't receive a lot of, of love from my parents. My mom left when I was a little girl, and I guess it would be true to say that I never really felt love from my father. And in fact, um, uh, I grew up with him after my mom left, my sisters and I, and he often blamed us children for my mom leaving. Um, so, I, but, but however, I'd like to point out that I did recognize there was a loving kindness in my church family. Mm -hmm. And I saw this, and this, I think, is what planted that seed in my heart. And, that, and I never gave up on that. And I, I can also say that I felt faith and love when I studied the Bible as a young girl. And, you know, I, I witnessed and saw that it could be different than the way it was in my family. So I, I, even though that foundation of my family environment could have pulled me down, um, instead, I think that um, uh, there was always a strength in me and an inner voice that just wouldn't allow that to define me. And so um, I learned to listen to that inner voice. And I think as an adult, I consciously listen to my inner voice. Um, I know when I was a child, it was in there. But now as an adult, I, I practice it consciously. So I guess you back to your question, a defining moment, I think, when I acted out of love was in the midst of all this family turmoil. When I was a teenager, I became pregnant at age 17. And um, 
you know, I was um, in that family situation. I knew this was going to be a problem. And, and yet I was so filled with the love and thought of raising this child. And so I think uh, the decision to go out on my own at age 18, six months pregnant, no family support, just totally out in the world, um, I, I overcame that fear that was there and just stepped out into the world and, um, and began um, that loving life, nurturing. And, you know, my son and I may have not had a lot of material things, but we definitely shared a new love. So I would say that being pregnant and going out on my own, that was definitely a defining moment in my life. And you chose love as you moved into it. I did. Of, I did. of what you said, you know, what really spoke to me and what I'm curious about is your voice. Is it a voice that you hear? What, how, do you, how do you listen to your intuition? Um, I, Vivian, I think it, it actually feels like it flows through my heart. I, 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 it's just this voice that speaks to me to make decisions from my heart. And I think that through um, making wrong decisions, uh, when I haven't listened and say I acted out of fear, then I wind up with something that's not um, my genuine intention. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that answers you. So it's almost like you can tell the difference. I can. I can feel it. It's you can actually feel the difference. Yes, I can. Absolutely. That's fascinating. Now, <laughs> so so this is your major pivot. You know, you're you're pregnant. You're moving out into the world on your own. This yes. is when you begin your life. Tell us more about that. Well, you know, I mean, it was scary, Vivian. I mean, I was on my own and raising a baby and no family support. Um, but, you know, um, I always I, I felt so thrilled um, that, that I had this opportunity um, to raise my son and to give him love and I know this was love that I felt you know that I didn't feel and yet I was really able to give that to him mm -hmm. and you know I grew up without feeling loved and and yet there was this little voice and this little seed that was always inside of me that knew that I I needed that I very much should receive love and give love mm -hmm. and was very capable of that and knew that that was the way it was supposed to be so um I don't know, I just feel naturally drawn towards a loving life. And that's the way it was with my son. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of um, uh, prayer and my faith and just daily intentions of love and thoughtfulness um, that I think really, um, you know, it, it was, and, and it was also, I guess, if I can share a story, um, I acted out of fear once. And, and that, that caused me to have a new bump in my world. And that when I acted out of fear, um, was actually when I married for the first time. Mm -hmm. And um, there was, without a lot of details, there was a lot of pressure on me, and basically I caved in. And so I, I really, it's not an excuse, I'm just being honest. Um, I, I think I, I knew when I said my wedding vows um, that it was a mistake and this was not my soulmate. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid to be alone. And I was afraid, I, I, you know, I'd listened to the, that fear, and it was a mistake, and the marriage wasn't, based on a solid ground. So, you know, that's when I made a decision based on fear rather than acting on love, and it didn't turn out well. But, oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm just imagining, because I was there when you married Esco. Yes. <laughs> oh, and that's what I can share acting on love. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, yes. And, and I just hear the, the tone in your voice change. So, so describe the difference between that decision the first time and oh when, you, when you made the decision to marry Esco. Well, you know, I went a lot of years after my divorce. Um, it was almost 25 years, and I didn't, never, you know, not, not remarrying. And um, I had some different relationships, and some of them were 
my son told me later, Mom, quit picking guys that need fixing. He said, you don't need fixing. He said, get a guy that doesn't need fixing and you'll be happy. And I said, well, how do I do that? You know. And so then I thought, you know, and I, I've mentioned my husband and I met on the internet and a dating site. And I went on there and I literally just poured out my heart. I spoke my honest truth of who I was and what I was looking for. And my husband, there were some other things I think that he was looking for and my name popped up. And, you know, from the moment that he reached out to me, I felt this loving connection from my heart to his. And it has been so going forward all these years later um, that my soulmate and this man who is just the love flows from his heart. And he is just such a well-intentioned man, a, a, such a, a loving heart. And when I said my vows that time, I remember that the, the lady but was going to marry us, a reverend came in and talked to me and she said to me, now, are you sure you're ready? And I said, I have never been more ready for anything in my life. Mm -hmm. So, and I know my tone changes because I just love my husband every day, this, a new appreciation or my heart just sings. So I, you know, it's just such a difference when you act on love. And, and that, that is one thing I, I really want to share with our listeners is the difference between when I acted on fear and when I made choices acting on love. So when you acted on fear, you did it because you thought it would make you safe and secure. I, yes. And, and, and make you a part of a community. Yep. And you're exactly right, Vivian. But it didn't do that. No, it didn't. It was the exact opposite. It was the long, dark years. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it was. It was. Yes. And then, you know, then after that, um, I, as I said, I, I went a long time before I remarried. And, um, but now, um, and, you know, there's a lot of growth in there and a lot of um, looking back and, and, and thinking about um, my actions and growing as a person. And, you know, so, um, so that's kind of my story as far as a couple of the um, times in my life when I've acted out of fear versus love. Well, and, and I, and I, and what I, one of the things that I want to draw attention to, because you and I have the, the wonderful advantage of always having conversations like this. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that I want to draw attention to is, is the idea that, when you're acting in fear, you think that you're doing it to get all those things that you crave. But like, like you, like you said, you know, in reality, it didn't give you any of that. And when you make a decision, when you made the decision based on love, those outcomes naturally flowed out from that. Is that true? Yes, Vivian, that's very true. Very, very true. And, you know, I think that um, another thing, um, I realized that my life could have gone on a very different path the way I was raised up. Um, you know, I didn't, maybe I didn't have the family foundation, but, and yet my inner self, my, my inner voice that speaks to me, um, that has been my guiding light um, through, through all kinds of circumstances. And also prayer, my faith, and my, I have daily intentions of love, and, you know, and I, I nurture myself and my soul. So it's been definitely a learning process for me. And so of all, all that you've learned, what would you say is, is your highest wisdom to share? Well, um, and lived, learned and lived. <laughs> well, I will tell you that I love being happy and I love choosing love when I, when I, when I make my choices and decisions. I love when things flow through my heart. Um, I'm continually learning and searching, um, seeing if I'm growing and nurturing my soul. And that's my inner voice. And as long as that I allow it to flow through my heart, I think I make the right decisions. Well, that's, that's interesting because one of, the, one, of the things that, one of the themes that comes up in my teachings is the journey from your head to your heart because we feel a sense of security when we act out of logic. Um, but what I'm hearing from you is that that sureness, that knowingness comes to you when you know it's flowing through your heart. 
not through yeah. your brain. Say more about that. Um, well, um, I think um, um, that when I let fear, but I, for me, I feel like the fear is when it's going through my brain when I mm -hmm. make the decision. And so um, I can think of so many times, you know, like I mentioned a couple of them, where I made that choice in fear. Mm -hmm. And when I made that choice in fear and it went through my head and my brain and it, and it, it didn't come through my heart, it never had the expected outcome. And so um, uh, I think that um, my guiding inner voice that flows through my heart, I really believe that it flows through my heart and a softening of my heart also. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and not putting um, difficult expectations on myself or others. Um, being willing to open up my heart and share it and give it. Um, those are all been things I think that have uh, given me really rewarding, loving relationships. I can think of a lot of people that I feel drawn to along the way. Um, on this path and this journey I've been on. And it's been so rewarding. And it really has. It's just filled my heart with love. I, I feel so thankful and so happy. Tell me about, tell me more about being drawn to people. Because one of the things that's coming up recently is, is this sense of loneliness, of people feeling alone and that they don't have enough of a community around them. How did you identify who your heart was drawing you towards? Well, it's a couple of things. One is, I've said this before, I select my attitude when I get up in the day. And I do that intentionally. I have my intentions and my prayer or meditation. I select. And it doesn't mean that outside influences can't come in. I understand that. Um, but let's say for an example, when I'm out um, when I'm out walking, because I love to go out and walk, I'll, my husband and I are out on the trail walking, and when I see people coming, I will smile at them. I radiate my smile, but that smile comes from my heart. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the sharing that I do. Um, but, and you never know, there might be an opportunity when you, if you're lonely or someone's lonely, you might help them by, by that reaching out from your heart. And it is out there if you try. And, you know, there are days, you know, maybe when I don't feel that, but I still try it. And when you try it and you put it into practice, then it works and you feel better. It's like the days when I don't want to go do exercise and my husband says to me, come on. And I go out there and I go and I feel fabulous afterwards. And I'm so thankful that I did it. But I tried. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that exactly answers what you were asking. I might have rambled a little bit there, Vivian. You didn't. You didn't. I didn't. I, I, I love how you said that you radiate um, your smile. You know, it is something that is drawn from outside, from inside of you, from an inside out, and then it's just beamed out. That that was a beautiful imagery. Oh, thank you. I And I feel that, and I, and I feel that that resonates. And, you know, there's, I don't know if I can put it into words, but many times when I meet people, I have a sense, like Vivian, when I met you, I had that sense. And other people that I've met along the way, they have this heart connection or this willingness. It's like a softened heart that can, that's the words, Vivian, I'm trying to find it. Say but, more about that sense, because what I, that's, that's fascinating to me. Like, what it was that sense? Because back then in those days, I, I thought I was always in a hurry. <laughs> you know? No, I, it was like the minute you walked into this, you were in a hurry. And <laughs> you were. I remember that. Here comes this ball of fire. <laughs> oh, goodness. You were a ball of fire. And then I was immediately, there's something in your eyes, Vivian, and your soul comes out through your heart. Even though you were serious and... You know, when you started calling me in to help you and work on different things, and we had that heart connection. And then remember when I brought in um, Flexo Woman, mm -hmm. she, <laughs> and that was a funny moment. And I mean, it was just, there was something about you, Vivian, and there's different people that I've met in my life that uh, it's almost like I feel like my heart and theirs touches. Aww. I feel that. I've, there's something that I feel, and part of it, I think, is because I give from my heart and they feel it. And that may be a softening of my heart or, you know, I mean, 
It's hard to put it into words. I knew it would be difficult to describe that. It is. I've heard I've heard some spiritual teachers say that our words merely point towards they aren't mm-hmm. the thing. You know, language is, is, is complex and difficult. But I, I I I completely understand. I know that I'm still learning and I'm still um figuring out what I'm pointing to, but but that made complete sense to me. It was not a ramble at all. Oh, good. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm constantly um, thinking and reevaluating and, you know, re-looking at my heart and my soul. And, you know, I think um, one thing I think about maybe my unique truth can be learning from my past. And I think now, right now, is tomorrow's past. So I guess what I mean is it never stops Mm -hmm. uh, for me. And to me, that's what life is about. Like right now with you, I'm learning, Vivian. I'm sharing. I'm learning. I'm giving from my heart. now. And so, you know, tomorrow, this is the past. And Mm -hmm. so I never want to stop doing that. I want to always give from my heart and learn and um, just keep on going forward in life. Yeah, I'm holding that beautiful flower. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That unfolding. That's mm-hmm. beautiful. Thank you. Well, do you have any parting words for the listeners on knowing their unique truth, on making the choice to love, so love as a choice, or um, living your own unique life? Well, I guess one thing I'd say is in spite of my early experiences, I always have had an inner voice giving me a hope to be able to shape a better future. And I just feel naturally drawn towards a loving life and that it is up to me to build on that daily. So I I really want to encourage them to have prayer or faith, daily intentions of love and thoughtfulness, nurturing their soul, and just try to select to weave that throughout their life on a daily basis. That's what I do. That's beautiful. Thank you, Rebecca. You've just heard Rebecca and I having a heart-to-heart conversation. I absolutely am so grateful for you. Oh, Vivian, same here. Me too.